رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَأُصَلِّي وَأُسَلِّمُ عَلَىٰ أَشْرَفِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَالْمُرْسَلِينَ نَبِيِّنَا وَحَبِيبِنَا وَقُرَّةِ أَعْيُنِنَا مُحَمَّدٍ بْنَ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَتَمُّ التَّسْلِيمِ أما بعد We always begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Insha'Allah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on Birrul Walidain. In other words, be good to thy parents. Being good to thy parents. Because my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, our parents are from the greatest bounties and favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon us. Allahu Akbar. They are massive doors to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. They are massive entry pathways for us to gain entry into Jannah. But sadly, many of us, many of us, including myself, Illama Rahimallah, have lost the value of our parents. Allahu Akbar. I tell you all, Wallahi, Wallahi, by Allah, the ones who have lost their parents, the ones who have lost their parents, if they could go to the graves of their parents, and if they could bring their parents back to life, they would, they would, and they would beg for the forgiveness of their parents. Allahu Akbar. Then we, the ones who have our parents with us, we should consider ourselves lucky. And let us not waste time. Say we are in a different country, perhaps we are abroad and our parents are in another country. Let us not waste time. Let us not think, okay, the next time I go on vacation, let me go patch up things. Don't. Don't, don't waste time. Try and patch up things if things have gone sour with your parents. Try and patch up things ASAP. Make a phone call and patch up things because none of us can guarantee for how long we or our parents may remain. Allahu Akbar. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam. There is a hadith known as the hadith of three Ameens. The hadith is recorded in Sahih al targhib and it has been classed Sahih by Imam al-Albani rahimahullah. The narration goes along the lines of these words that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he climbed the pulpit, the member, and for each step he climbed, he said, Ameen, 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 Allahu Akbar. So when he got down, the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'een, who were very observant and who had observed this, they went up to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, why did you say Ameen thrice? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then explains, Jibreel, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he came down, and for each step I climbed, he made a dua, and I said, Ameen to that dua. Now before I mention the duas, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you need to understand that this is Jibreel, Archangel Gabriel who is making the dua, and it is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sealing off the dua with his Ameen, Allahu Akbar. Can there be any doubt that these duas may not be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first dua Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam made is that let destruction be upon the person who attained the month of Ramadan and let it slip by without attaining the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. May Allah the Almighty all bless us with, with His forgiveness in this blessed month of Ramadan. Ameen. To which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ameen. The second dua, let destruction be upon the one in whose life his parents Either both of his parents or one of his parents attains old age and due to his failure in service towards his parents, he is blocked from entering Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Let destruction be upon that one, upon that individual to which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ameen. Allahu Akbar. The final dua is that let destruction be upon the one who hears your name, Ya Rasulullah and fails to make salawat upon you. Please remember salawat whenever I mention the beautiful name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ameen to that dua. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is upon us to value our parents. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in the Noble Quran, 
وقضى ربك الا تعبدوا الا اياه وبالوالدين احسانا اما يبلغ عندك الكبر احدهما او كلاهما فلا تقل لهما وَكُلَّهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَنِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord has decreed that you worship none other than him وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and that you should treat your parents with excellence. Allahu Akbar. وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرْ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا and if they reach or attain old age, if they both or one of them, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ do not say uff unto them, Allahu Akbar. Scholars of Tafasir mention that if there was a word lesser in disrespect than uff, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have mentioned that word. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا uff. Do not say uff. Perhaps your parents, your mom or your dad wants you to do something. Don't say uff or don't just neglect what they have to say, Allahu Akbar. Rather, قُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Address them with honorable terms, Allahu Akbar. Address them with honorable terms. وَخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower the wings of submission and humility unto them. وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِي صَغِيرًا And pray for them that, Ya Allah, bless both of them just as how they brought me up when I was small. Allahu Akbar. Scholars of Tafasir, such as Imam Mujahid, rahimahullah, they mention that when your parents attain old age and when they lose control of their bladders perhaps and when they start urinating on themselves, when they start defecating on themselves, do not say uff and do not look at them with disgust. Allahu Akbar. Shaykhul Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he states that if an individual makes his mother or father cry, if tears flow because of him, it is upon him to make them laugh, make them smile, just as how he made them cry. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. Books of history mention that once a man goes to Ibn Umar radiallahu an, a man goes to Ibn Umar radiallahu an, and he asks Ibn Umar radiallahu an, Ya Ibn Umar, I have a mother. I have a mother who is very old. She's so frail and so old that every single day I have to carry her because she's so old. I have to carry her and take her out to the plains, somewhere a deserted area where she can relieve herself. I carry her every single day. I wait until she relieves herself and then I turn my face away out of respect for her. I clean her after she has relieved herself and then I carry her once again and bring her back home. And then he asks Ibn Umar radiallahu an, Ya Ibn Umar, have I fulfilled my haqq towards my mother? Have I fulfilled my right towards my mother? Ibn Umar radiallahu an who states, no, you have not even fulfilled your right towards your mother for even one contraction of pain she went through in her pregnancy with you, Allahu Akbar. Not even for one single contraction. And then he goes on to say, but what you're doing is extremely good. Persist in what you're doing. Why I said this was because now what you're doing for your mother you are doing it hoping that she should expire soon. You are hoping that she should expire soon because she is a burden for you. On the other hand, 
your mother did the very same thing for you when you were small praying and hoping that you should live a long fruitful life Allahu Akbar this is the difference you are doing it hoping that she should expire but she did the same things or perhaps more for you hoping and praying that you should live a long and fruitful life Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our parents and may he the almighty forgive them and grant them the highest stations in Jannah Ameen in regard to a particular individual he is known as a tabi'i he is not a sahabi but he lived during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his name was Uwais al-Qarani Uwais al-Qarani I'm not going to go into the depth of the story but I'll just highlight that it was he could not meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he was busy in the service of his mother his mother who was a blind old lady during the time when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive he couldn't go and meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was from Yemen but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke highly about him and also informed the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'een if you ever meet this individual he gave a description about Uwais al-Qarani if you meet him, ask him to seek forgiveness for you because his du'as will be answered. Allahu Akbar. The only reason, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, because of his unwavering service to his beloved mother, his beloved blind mother, he did not leave her side even to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And because of that beautiful service, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him such a high rank and a status. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the opposite of birrul walidain that is being good to thy parents is uququl walidain allahu akbar and that is disrespecting your parents let us not become an evil sign of the day of qiyamah because it is mentioned in a very famous hadith known as hadith of jibril a very famous hadith this hadith has been recorded in bukhari muslim the muslim of imam ahmad the book of imam tirmidhi and ibn majah and many other books such a famous hadith a long beautiful hadith where the narration goes along the lines of these words that a man once went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ittala alayna rajulun shadeedu bayadu thiyab wa shadeedu sawadi shaar la yura alayhi atharu safar wa la ya'rifuhu minna ahad hatta jalasa ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a man wearing sparkling white clothes having jet black hair no signs of journey, no signs of fatigue. He goes and sits by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, akhbirni yani al-Islam, tell me about Islam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches him Islam. Ya Muhammad, akhbirni yani al-Iman. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about Iman. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him the six articles of faith. Ya Muhammad, akhbirni yani al-Ihsan. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me about Ihsan. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him about Ihsan. And then he asks, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni yani al-Sa'ah. Tell me about the final hour. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had identified the individual as Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam. It was Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam who had come in the guise of a human being to teach the Sahaba and to teach the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam beautifully answers to that question. Mal mas'oolu anha bi a'lama min as-sail. The one who is being questioned knows no better than the questioner. In other words, you and I, we are on the same rank in regard to knowledge of the day of Qiyamah. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not have knowledge of the unseen except for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taught Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one knows when the day of Qiyamah will take place. So he clarifies that to Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam. And then Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam says, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنْ أَمَارَاتِهَا so then tell me about the signs of the day of Qiyamah. So one of those signs, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states in the same hadith, أن تلد الأمة ربتها وفي رواية ربها الله أكبر The direct translation for that statement is that a slave girl will give birth to her, to her master or in another narration to her mistress. The direct translation, a slave girl will give birth to him to her master or to her mistress 
Now scholars have different opinions in regard to it, but the best explanation according to my opinion is the explanation of Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah who states that that statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicates that towards the latter stages, towards the times where the day of Qiyamah will be close, tables will turn. Allahu Akbar. Tables will turn, everything will start occurring topsy-turvy and children will start treating their parents like slaves. Allahu Akbar. They will start ordering and commanding their parents like slaves. Allahu Akbar. They will not listen to their parents. They, for example, a, a man will listen to his wife and disobey his mother. He will put down his mother and listen to his wife. A man will listen to his friends and dishonor his father. Allahu Akbar. All signs of the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us not become from the evil signs of the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Let us love our parents and let us treat our parents with excellence upon excellence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins and may he the almighty forgive the sins of our parents and may he bless our parents and may he bless our parents with high stations in Jannah and may he grant us the opportunity to treat our parents with excellence upon excellence and may he the almighty accept our good deeds may he alleviate the sufferings the Muslim Ummah is going through especially the Muslims in Gaza and may he the almighty unite all of us just as how he united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Amin wa akhir da'wa yani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Jazakumullah